The Perfect Heart One day a young man was standing in the middle of the town, proclaiming that he had the most beautiful heart in the whole valley. A large crowd gathered and they all admired his heart for it was perfect. There was not a mark or a flaw in it. Yes, they all agreed it truly was the most beautiful heart they had ever seen. The young man was very proud and boasted more loudly about his beautiful heart. Suddenly, an old man appeared at the front of the crowd and said why your heart is not nearly as beautiful as mine. The crowd and the young man looked at the old man's heart. It was beating strongly, but full of scars, it had places where pieces had been removed and other pieces put in, but they didn't fit quite right and there were several jagged edges. In fact, in some places there were deep gouges where whole pieces were missing. The people stared how can he say his heart is more beautiful, they thought. The young man looked at the old man's heart and saw its state and laughed. You must be joking, he said. Compare your heart with mine, mine is perfect and yours is a mess of scars and tears. Yes, said the old man, yours is perfect looking but I would never trade with you. You see, every scar represents a person to whom I have given my love. I tear out a piece of my heart and give it to them, and often they give me a piece of their heart which fits into the empty place in my heart. But, because the pieces aren't exact, I have some rough edges, which I cherish, because they remind me of the love we shared. Sometimes I have given pieces of my heart away, and the other person hasn't returned a piece of his heart to me. These are the empty gouges giving love is taking a chance. Although these gouges are painful, they stay open, reminding me of the love I have for these people. I hope someday they may return and fill the space I have waiting. So now do you see what true beauty is? The young man stood silently with tears running down his cheeks. He walked up to the old man, reached into his perfect young and beautiful heart, and ripped a piece out. He offered it to the old man with trembling hands. The old man took his offering, placed it in his heart and then took a piece from his old scarred heart and placed it in the wound in the young man's heart. It fit, but not perfectly, as there were some jagged edges. The young man looked at his heart, not perfect anymore but more beautiful than ever, since love from the old man's heart flowed into his. They embraced and walked away side by side. How sad it must be to go through life with a whole heart. Never fight over trifles. It was high summer. A traveler hired a donkey and set out on a journey. The owner of the donkey was following behind to drive the beast. At midday, they decided to take rest for some time but couldn't find any shady place around. So, the traveler decided to rest in the shade of the donkey. But the owner didn't let him do so as he himself wanted to sit in its shadow. The traveler said, How can you refuse me the shadow? I have paid you money after all. But you have paid for the ride, not for resting in a shadow, retorted the owner. So, an argument followed between the two. When the donkey saw that the owner and the hirer were busy fighting, he took to his heels and was soon out of sight. Better bent than broken. Once a huge oak tree stood on the bank of a river, it was well nourished by the water of the river. Naturally, it was very strong and had a thick stem. Just nearby, grew some reeds with thin but flexible stems. They stood almost half in water and had flourished well too. One day, strong winds blew. The tree, though huge and strong, broke from the middle and was thrown across the stream just among the reeds. On the other hand, the tree was very surprised to see that the reeds suffered no harm at all. The oak could not make out the reason of the safety of the reeds and asked them, How is it that, you being frail and slender, managed to face the gale without any harm? But I, strong enough, have been broken. The reeds replied, You were proud of your strength and refused to bend. So, you broke while we bowed and yielded to the gale and were spared. Who would like this $20 bill? 
a well-known speaker started his seminar by holding up a $20 bill. In the room of 200, he asked, Who would like this $20 bill? Hands started going up. He said, I am going to give this $20 to one of you, but first, let me do this. He proceeded to crumple the $20 note up. He then asked, Who still wants it? Still, the hands were up in the air. Well, he replied, What if I do this? He dropped it on the ground and started to grind it into the floor with his shoe. He picked it up, now crumpled and dirty. Now, who still wants it? Still, the hands went into the air. My friends, you have all learned a very valuable lesson. No matter what I did to the money, you still wanted it because it did not decrease in value. It was still worth $20. Many times in our lives, we are dropped, crumpled, and ground into the dirt by the decisions we make in the circumstances that come our way. We feel as though we are worthless, but no matter what happens or what will happen, you will never lose your value. Dirty or clean, crumpled or finely creased, you are still priceless to those who love you. The worth of our lives comes, not in what we do or who we know, but by who we are. You are special, don't ever forget it. A coward can't teach courage. Once there lived a hind in a forest, she had a son who had grown very young and strong. She was very happy to see his stout body and branched strong horns and thought, Stags have powerful horns, why should they be afraid of hounds, wolves then? It's sheer cowardice. I would never like my son to do it at all. After some time, the hind's son came there. The hind wanted to teach him to be courageous. She said, Son, you have a stout body and strong horns. So, you must not run away from hounds and wolves. Don't be a coward. Okay, mom, I won't, said the stag. Just then the mother and the son heard the bark of the hounds. The hind got ready to run away when her son asked her to stay on. She said, you may, but I have no horns. Saying so, she ran as fast as she could. The mother herself was a coward and was teaching courage to her son. What a satire! Belling the cat. Long ago, the mice had a general council to consider what measures they could take to outweat their common enemy, the cat. Some said this, and some said that, but at last a young mouse got up and said he had a proposal to make, which he thought would meet the case. You will all agree, said he that our chief danger consists in the sly and treacherous manner in which the enemy approaches us. Now, if we could receive some signal of her approach, we could easily escape from her. I venture, therefore, to propose that a small bell be procured, and attached by a ribbon round the neck of the cat. By this means we should always know when she was about, and could easily retire while she was in the neighborhood. This proposal met with general applause, until an old mouse got up and said, That is all very well, but who is to bell the cat? The mice looked at one another and nobody spoke. The rat and the elephant. A rat was traveling along the king's highway. He was a very proud rat, considering his small size and the bad reputation all rats have. As Mr. Rat walked along, he kept mostly to the disc, he noticed a great commotion up the road, and soon a grand procession came in view. It was the king and his retinue. The king rode on a huge elephant adorned with the most gorgeous trappings. With the king and his luxurious howdah were the royal dog and cat. A great crowd of people followed the procession. They were so taken up with admiration of the elephant, that the rat was not noticed. His pride was hurt. What fools, he cried. Look at me, and you will soon forget that clumsy elephant. Is it his great size that makes your eyes pop out? Or is it his wrinkled hide? Why, I have eyes and ears and as many legs as he. 
I am of just as much importance, and but just then the royal cat spied him, and the next instant, the rat knew he was not quite so important as an elephant. A resemblance to the great in some things does not make us great.